Alright, here's my first video in six months. We're gonna be rebuilding a uh, Husqvarna 50 special, which is kind of like the regular 50, but it's like kind of an updated version. It's in between the, I think the 50, 51 came out afterwards. Uh, get the upside down nameplate here. There you go. Let's see if it can. Yeah, but well, anyway. Um, yeah, so I gotta put a piston and cylinder. I already put a cylinder in it, but it needs a piston now because. I got a Chinese cylinder and piston and they're not the best sometimes. They're hit or miss. Um, yeah, I don't know what, mo what year this is. I think these were like 1990 saws. A lot of people like these units. I like it. It's a decent saw. You can see it's got decompression on it. Uh, that's from the new cylinder. So I put everybody puts big bore cylinders on these. and so the way the big bores work on these saws is this is a 50 special so it's they kind of switched over to a newer style crankcase which will fit the big bore cylinders this is the original oem cylinder off the saw um it's not terrible it, i mean i would run it really but there, there's a little bit and it's probably maybe not going to focus i don't know it's not that bad Oh, there, there's the bad. There's the bad on the exhaust side. The grooves aren't as bad as they look, but they're not great. So anyway, I figured I'd get a big bore cylinder for it, because why not? Now, big bore cylinders, you can get name brand ones like Highway, which is the piston I got. Um, this is the pop-up piston, which I'll show in a minute. Um, but the uh, Chinese kits, you know, are like 20 bucks for a piston and a cylinder. I would not recommend using the piston. Uh, the cylinder seems okay so far. But anyway, I'll just show you how. These are really easy to rebuild, so it's not really something. I mean, if you have a little bit of mechanical skill here, you, you, you can rebuild your chainsaw fairly easy. Not much to these Husqvarna. So this is basically... I'm putting a 50 Husqvarna 55 cylinder and piston in it. So this is 46 millimeter, 46 millimeter bore. Uh, I don't know what these are. These are either 40. I think these are 45 millimeter. It's not a huge difference in displacement. Um, but anyway, it works. You'll see the transfer ports and stuff are a little larger on the aftermarket cylinder. Anyway, so I guess we'll start by taking stuff off. So you know take your three flathead screws out of this cover and it'll come off and get going on it. Okay, so you can see I got the uh, cover off. Top cover, unplug the uh, spark plug on it. Um, so back these screws off which is going to hold kind of your intake on. Uh, there's supposed to be supposed to be a bolt in here. My, it's missing on this saw uh, from all the times it's been taken apart. Um, so here's your throttle linkage. That just slides out. Sits in there. Don't lose that. That's, yeah. You don't have to worry about it too much but anyway that's all there is to that. Um, these carbs only have one line to them because the fuel pump port which as you can see is doesn't really line up with this gasket it's right there so yeah don't lose your throttle linkage um then these i think th these might be eight mil screws i have a 516 it's close enough eight mil screws there and then this plastic will come off there's a little rubber coupler that goes to the cylinder get that off and then we're gonna have to take the muffler can off as well which is not too bad. Um, so we got the dogs on here. You don't have to take them off. I'm gonna pull the uh, bar off in a second, just to make it easier. Cause there's two. Again, I think they're eight, supposed to be eight mil bolts there that hold this little bracket on, and then you can pull these off, which are also the same size, eight mil or five sixteenths, whatever you have. And the muffler can will slide off. Okay, muffler cans off, bars off, uh, the exhaust studs, you just gotta pull the uh, gasket off of them. 
and the studs just come out. They're both the same. You go right in slots on the cylinder. And then that's all there is to that. And then these two bolts. And then the factory, uh, the factory cylinders are gonna have a hex head bolt uh, down in there. There's a larger hole on the cylinder so that you can get your socket in there. You know, it's a quarter inch drive right there. It does fit 5 16 or 8 mil. It does fit. Now, the aftermarket cylinder, I had to replace the bolts. New socket head bolts because the holes are not big enough to put a hex socket through. So uh, these are metric thread, I believe. I think they're M8. Not sure. I don't remember. I had. I found them. I had them laying around. Um, but yeah, that is something you will need if you get one of these big bore cylinders. Uh, one of these Chinese kits, anyway, uh, from eBay. You'll need to replace those bolts if it doesn't have big enough holes in it. Um, yeah, the saw is still warm actually. It was just running that long ago. And you'll see why I'm rebuilding it again in a minute. Okay, bolts are loose. I just broke it free. Uh, so this, I did not use a base gasket on the cylinder. I'll show show that and why. There you go. Pull the cylinder off. There she is. This thing was just running a few minutes ago. Cutting some firewood. Um, anyway, so this is a Chinese piston. Uh, the saw has probably got four tanks of fuel run through it since I rebuilt it. And those grooves are already pretty bad. And I'm, I'm, I'm run, not even running like 50 to 1 in this either. I had 32 to 1 in it. So I was running it in my other saw that I was milling with. Uh, I had 32 to 1 in it. And uh, yeah. That's pretty bad. For only that much run time. So. The cylinder is still Hopefully still good. Last I saw, I've had this apart since. The cylinder wall is still smooth. There's nothing in that. I don't know how good, how long the plating will last on this cylinder. So they are plated aluminum. They're not cast iron or anything. Um, so that I don't know how long this will last. But the casting is very nice on these Chinese cylinders for what you pay for them just as good as the OEM casting. There's no bubbles in it, no flash or anything. Um, I did a little bit of porting to this, uh, which that's another thing with these chainsaws is full of misinformation on porting these because we do real porting on real motors, real two-stroke stuff. But these saws are ridiculous, the amount of in misinformation there is on porting these. Anyway, all I did on this is just kind of clean up. So the, the port was a little rough, chamfered the ports correctly. You don't really need to worry about it too much if you're just rebuilding a rebuilding your saw. Essentially, sometimes there's a sharp edge on these ports which can catch the piston ring. If you're just going to put it together not touch anything, it'll probably be fine. Um, I just did it because I could, really. It doesn't make that big of a difference unless you're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And these motors are garbage anyway on these saws. Any saw. Not, the Husqvarna makes good saws, but yeah. So, getting the piston off, you can see this little clip in there. So you can grab that with a pair of needle nose pliers and turn to the, if you're looking at it this way, turn it to the right a little bit as you kind of push. You can pull it out of there pretty easily. You gotta make sure when you have this open, don't get anything inside of the crankcase here. You wanna keep this clean. Don't let anything fall into there. Okay, so once you get your sir clip out, 
you can see right here is the wrist pin which holds your piston on to the connecting rod. Um, see, it should just slide out if you push on it. It shouldn't be in there. You might have to tap it a little bit, but when you do that, support the piston and don't don't hit anything with a hammer uh, without supporting the piston itself. Um, but it shouldn't come out of there too tight anyway. Uh, these aren't press fit. Okay. So, see that's out? Now, let's take our screwdriver out. Okay. There is our Chinese piston. This is much lighter weight than the new Highway brand one, which is better. Um, but yeah, you can see this isn't in isn't in great shape after such a short run time. The air filter on this thing's fine. There's no leaks in the intake system. Look at that, you can see I already got some junk in here. Now you shouldn't get anything in there. But I'm not gonna worry about it that much on my saw. Cause it'll be fine, but you shouldn't get anything in your motor. It's not good for it. All right, we'll open up our our new piston. They package these pretty nicely. Here's the new rings. There's no brand on the rings, but it's whatever. Here's a new highway piston. I think it's a lot heavier. It's good and bad. More good though in the case of this. So, got a new wrist pin in here, which may or may not fit. So don't throw away your OEM wrist pin if you're putting a big bore kit on. There's a uh, new circlips right there. Anyway, they call this a pop-up piston because of this little area here that's raised. It gives you a little more compression. Uh, you see this arrow that points towards your exhaust port on the saw, so don't mess that up. Uh, but yeah, this is, you, know, you can see the highway brand cast in there. These are pretty decent pistons for uh, rebuilding your saw. Um, you know, as good as it's going to be unless you get OEM stuff. Which is always, you know, the best option for this stuff, usually. Um, so, when you're doing a big bore kit, the bearing they give you with the big bore kit is probably going to be for the Husqvarna 55s. Uh, and that won't work with with the wrist pin that you get in the big bore kit in the bearing it just won't work so I believe or I use so the wrist, this wrist pin is the OEM one from the saw which fits the piston you get which may or may not fit the new highway piston looks like it does um, then you might you may have to use your original bearing, which I wouldn't use the Chinese bearing either if you're gonna do this. I would get an OEM needle bearing up here if you get one of the cheap big bore kits. The Chinese bearings usually don't work very good. They don't last. So you know, get most of the junk cleaned out of there. Okay, so then another thing with these saws is what you hear people talk about when they say squish, which is when the piston's all the way up at top dead center, it's the distance between the top of the piston and the top of the cylinder right here is your squish. Now, this big bore kit with the base gasket had about 60 thousandths of squish, which is way more than you want. You, I mean, between like 18 and 20 thousandths is a good safe number to use for squish. Uh, the OEM the OEM cylinder is closer to that range and it's much better for performance. You get more compression just the way everything works. It burns burns better essentially. But it's not a great way to fix it. I would put this in the lathe and turn so you can put put this in and turn this down, take off the amount you want, but I'm not gonna really bother so Basically what you can do is run no gasket 
and just use a uh, silicone sealant on here instead of using an actual little gasket between the cylinder and the crankcase, which does work, but when you check the squish band, most the easiest way is to pull the spark plug, to bolt your cylinder down, pull the spark plug out, turn the saw over by hand, make sure nothing hits or binds, and stick a piece of solder under there. Spin it over by hand, let it crush the solder down, and then you can measure the solder with the calipers. That'll tell you your squish. But once again, if you just slap it together without checking it, it'll, it's not, it'll be fine. Especially if you're using OEM parts, you're not going to have an issue. You just might not be getting the most performance that you possibly could out of what you're doing. Anyway, putting the piston back in is pretty much the same as taking it out, except you got to make sure you don't lose the circ clips. You would be really careful putting them in to not bend them too much or let them go springing across the shop and disappear. Okay, so once you get your piston in, you got your circ clips in the groove. Shouldn't be too hard. Make sure to coat everything in two-stroke oil any kind of oil before you put it back together, you know, the sides of it. So that nothing wears when you first start it up. Coat the cylinder in oil, make sure to put oil, you know, oil your bearing, all that. Everything. And then, okay, so we're going to be using a uh, Yama Bond. So yeah, you don't want to just use like regular RTV on this. Unless you're using the base gasket and then it's fine, but Yama Bond or whatever. There's other products, 3-Bond. It's all the same stuff. It's going to run a real thin bead around here. Make sure there's no oil on this. It's clean. Then just... You know, oh, you got to get your piston ring on, too. The end gap for the piston ring... And you shouldn't need to check the ring gap. Should be fine. The end gap of the piston ring has to be right here, where this pin is keeps the piston ring kind of from rotating. Make sure that's good. Fire right up. Oh,